Um, tell me about your, your journey in terms of when did you decide you wanted to start your own, your own tour business? Well, I want to answer that question with the, within the shadow of the diversity project. So in 2019, when I got back home after getting my tour director certification, I told myself that I didn't want to hold my breath until a tour operator would call me. I didn't know if a tour operator would call me. I didn't know when a tour operator would call me. So I said, what if? What if I start doing local tours in my own hometown? And that can accomplish two things. One, it can you know give me experience and two it can keep my edge sharp so if a tour operator does call i will be ready so that was what i had in mind i just said you know just don't you've got so much knowledge and so much training don't just put it on a shelf immediately put that to work so that that's kind of how it got started not really knowing what i was doing but i wanted to go ahead and get started so, you know, in light of what's the diversity project, I tried to be proactive and I tried to be preemptive. And what Trip School has done for me is just giving me a guide and a path to get that start your business on, you know, on its feet. So you went to the diversity project and that was something that we started um, with Leon Burnett, who's amazing um, in his own right. And um, we started that to kind of encourage um, more people of color to get into the travel industry because we've noticed, I mean, obviously throughout the years, but even before 2020 uh, put a light on it, there was a lack of diversity in this industry. Um, and, you know, I don't want to say intentional. I just think that a lot of it is this job is kind of obscure. It's not a job being a tour director, being a tour guide, even having your own tour company. It's not a job that's um, well known. I mean, I was a tour director for over 20 plus years and my family, some of my family doesn't even know what I do. They just don't like get paid to run around and I'm basically traveling all over the place. So it's not a job that's really mainstream. Um, so the diversity project was built um, based on that premise. We want to get the word out there to um, more minorities. Uh, to let them know that this job exists. And it's also important that minorities are there to share their stories because um, often in the tour industry, you know, as you know, people tend to only talk about the main things in a city or the main highlights in a city when there's so much more uh, richness yes. to the areas. Um, how are you, in designing your tours, um, how have you incorporated some of those things? Well, for me, it's important, as you said, to be, to be multidimensional in the fact that, um, you know, focusing on the sights, the sounds, the tastes, the textures, the sense of the city. And so one of the things that we want to try to do is to create a, an all-inclusive private small group experience. And that way we can just be very immersive and getting our travelers to just get beyond the normal spots, you know, that, that people go in to see. So um, two of the experiences that we created um, was to, to do just that. One's called um, Downtown Discovery and it, it blends part of the traditional history that's downtown with in the backdrop of the modern things that are downtown. And we're really excited, you know, that you can actually, you know, taste some flavors or hear some sounds or see some sights. that's a mixture of both the old and the new. And then another um, opportunity we created was what I like to call the murals of Instagram. And that is to share and take our travelers on a journey to some of the most photographed public art spaces in town, where they actually have a chance to meet the artist, in addition to, you know, um, getting the stories and the struggles of behind some of the, the most beautiful pieces of art in the city. That's amazing. Um, let's start with what's the name of your company again? Seen that tours. Um, how did you how did you come up with that name? Well, about four years ago, 
when I started um, blogging about my travels, that was the blog name that I came up with. And so um, because I had so much energy and so many stories just in my head that I didn't want them to get stuck, I said, I got to put these in a blog somewhere. So I just called my blog, you know, seen that. And so fast forward four years later, when it was time to start a company, I just kept that same name. So yeah, it, it's interesting because during the course, we kind of built it so that it, it can be there for everyone who's at all kinds of different stages of the building process. Some have just have an idea, some like you already had a blog, um, some have already done some local tours or started their own sort of business, but just on a small scale. Um, when you, the, the course itself, is designed to help you go from the, you know, the, the creative fun part of designing those great tours to the business side of the website and the, you know, social media and all that marketing stuff. Um, how, how much of a struggle was it with your website? Did you design it yourself as we kind of push in the class or did you actually go out and hire somebody? Fortunately, I built it myself. And fortunately, um, I, I'd already built like, um, four or five other websites for various reasons. One was for my blog. And so I was already familiar with WordPress. And um, that was a great asset. I didn't, it, I didn't know that Word, WordPress was that such of a behemoth <laughs> that people avoid it. So I was very thankful that I already had that particular skill set. In uh, with seeing that tours, you're based where? Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama, awesome. And what kind of, uh, is it generally walking tours that you're offering right now? Up until this point, we've been offering walking tours. So um, post pandemic, we want to go beyond downtown and you know, make an attempt to offer you know, um, tours that include a little transportation. Yeah, COVID, you know, starting a tour business in 2020 is, I always say two things going for it. One, it's people could say it's the worst time for travel, but on the second part, it's the best time to start because you have time now to kind of like see what's happening and people are traveling local. So I think local is the way to go right now. And then as you build that customer base, they're going to want to go further with you on maybe multi-day tours and other, other areas of, of Alabama mm -hmm. or the South as you develop more products. Um, what is your marketing strategy right now? What is your, are you fine? Or have you tested different things out or what are your thoughts on, on how you're marketing right now? Well, my primary priority is networking and building connections with decision makers. That's been the highest thing on the list for me. Secondly is social media. Um, even though I don't think that anyone might be buying anything right now. I feel it's critical to keep my name out there and to continue to sustain awareness of the brand. And then um, thirdly, with marketing, um, you know, personal outreach to, um, per, you know, pre-existing small groups, because that's what I want to focus on. Um, one of the things that I learned from um, the podcast, um, Tourpreneur, on which um, Lauren McCabe, her pitch was a guest, was that she literally reached out to, you know, local organizations that were already pre-existing, and she told them about, you know, the tours that she had available. So I want to rip a page from that playbook and to, you know, reach out to existing local groups. And then, you know, at some point, once we have a stable marketplace, I think I would like to pursue um, some paid social media. Now, on your journey, what was the biggest challenges for you in terms of the business process? So just to kind of put it in perspective, we have, you know, you already had a blog going, um, you took the course, and we kind of laid out a path, a sort of a path for everyone on, on what they need to do in terms of your name, your website, uh, you know, getting your domain name, um, your logo, getting your logo designed. And then once we had those things out of the way, we started on your tour products and how to build them. And then we went into the business side of it, your licensing, your insurance, uh, the legal stuff, the boring business stuff nobody wants to talk about, all the way to booking engines. And, and if you wanted to sign up with a booking platform or booking engine now or down the road, what's out there and available. 
So through that entire process, what would you say was the most challenging of the entire ordeal? For me, the most challenging thing was the pricing. Just, you know, what am I going to charge? You know, what is the value? What are the expenses? How expenses, how expensive are the expenses? And, you know, what is the market going to bear? That's the biggest challenge for me. Um, beyond that, you know, it's the whole uncertainty. You know, when's the market going to open up? We don't know the answer to that question. Um, personally, I know I need to do social media. However, I know social media is an art form. So I have reached out to a friend who is skilled with that. And I've asked her to kind of steer me and guide me to be sure that I'm utilizing social media properly. Um, lastly is accounting. Um, I know how to build a tour and run a tour, but you know, keeping up with all of that backstory, you know, so I've reached out to someone who has that particular skill set and said, you know, can you partner with me? And so I can be sure that, you know, all of my, you know, ducks are in a row. So, but I would say of all of that going on, it's just the pricing and being sure that I have the proper structure. Yeah, pricing is a big one for a lot of people because especially with, with COVID right now in 2020, there's two ways to look at pricing. There's the way that am I char are, are people willing to pay because, you know, I don't want to charge too much. I want to encourage them to take my tour. But on the other side, they haven't spent money in anything. So people have been home and they have a little bit of extra money. Not everyone, obviously, there's people that are hurting and out of work. But there are people that, you know, are still working that do have that money they have not spent. They normally take a family vacation or they haven't done that. Um, and they are able to have a little bit of extra funds to go and do things. So um, we've seen in the marketplace, basically both those scenarios where there's the people who you want to, you know, they don't have a lot of money to go on vacation this year because money's tight. So I want to offer them a good experience locally. It's something that's a reasonable value for them. And then you have the other side where there's people that actually do have money and they do have that money to spend and they're willing to spend it. They just been cooped up and tired and they want an incredible experience and they're willing to pay anything for it. So we've seen both sides of that in this industry sort of right now happen in COVID, which is very interesting. And it kind of gives you an idea on what your product can become. And it's a good time to test that out. You can test out a higher end product and see if it sells. Um, you know, as we always say, you put it out there, people want to buy it, they're going to buy it. Um, and if they don't, you try something else. But it's a good way to test it. And I don't think there's any reason why any small tour operator right now can't offer two different kinds of experiences if you're having a challenge on pricing. Did you do any test runs with your tours before you actually put them out there for sale or did you find that? Was oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, murals of Instagram. Um, we did a test case of that on August 1st. And I love this story because I invited about eight people, people that I knew would be real and would give me real critique. Um, and I was hoping, I said, well, if I invite eight, maybe four will come. All eight came. <laughs> So told you, was, people are want to do any people want to go through something <laughs> right now so they'll be there so all eight people came and you know we tested the transportation we tested going beyond the walking tour we tested you know building in a complete experience that includes food and drink and entertainment and it was just a delightful day and and really i I had originally built the tour to be about four or five hours, but I said, I don't want to burden my friends that long. So I'll just squeeze everything in and I'll only make it a three hour tour. Well, guess what? Everybody was having such a phenomenal time. It lasted over four hours and nobody wanted to leave. That's a good so, sign. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was just delightful. So yes, I, I am testing and you know, the money that I paid, for that test was so worth it. I learned things that, you know, I'd only had it like sketched out on a sheet of paper or in my head, but doing it in real time was so eye opening, you know, and people have given me very good critique and feedback. And, 
you know, I said, you got one, you've got to give me critique and feedback. And two, I'm going to ask if you could, you know, um, post a review and that way that can help my Google and Facebook algorithm. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, you know, it's not unusual to tell your friends, hey, listen, I'm going to put this incredible day together for you. What would you be willing to pay for that? Would you, you know, would you say, would you, would you pay $20 a person? Um, you know, if I'm including a little lunch or including a little, you know, snack or a drink or something. Um, and so you can, you know, it's, your friends be like, yeah, 20 bucks. Absolutely. I'll go hang out with you for four bucks for four hours for 20 bucks. Um, and you take care of me and give me tons of information. Um, that's a good, that's a deal. So, you know, if, you know, if you can't afford to put that money out, I, I would encourage new entrepreneurs to talk to your friends and say, listen, I'm starting a new business. I need some help here. I want you to test it out, but I need you to put some money up. Um, you'd be surprised your friends and family want to help you. They're all going to be there to support you. So. That's awesome. Um, and then, you know, just to kind of go back to the, the entrepreneurship program itself, you, you had this idea, you wanted to do it, you took the entrepreneurship program with us, um, and we're following up with you now just because we want people who are considering this, you know, whether they should go for it or, or, or bite the bullet and just, you know, take the course. We want to show them that, yeah, it can be done. I mean, you know, when we met you, what was it, two months ago, maybe? When was the, I forgot. You, it was time. June 1st. June 1st. <laughs> June 1st, and it is now, what, August 19th or 20th. Um, so June, July, August. So in just two and a half months, you went from beginning stages to now where you are with a business that you've already run tests with your friends, and you already have your website, and you have everything to go, and you're ready to sell, and you're ready to go. Um, so it can be done. It can be achieved. And I guess that's why we wanted to talk to you, just to kind of let people know that this is something, if you put in the work and you're taking this seriously, it can happen for you. So oh, I just want to say that, and this is totally unsolicited, but I just want to say what trip school means to me and that for me, trip school has given me directional signs along the start your business highway. So for me, trip school gave me that checklist. It gave me that to do list. It said, Denise, you need a logo, you need to get branding, you need to get insurance, you know, figure out what path you're going down. So it was a very step-by-step -step process. It was what I needed. And then also the thing that Trip School did for me was the fact that um, Alan and Mitch are so accessible. You know, I'm just an email away from an answer to a question. And so I have that connection with Trip School. Plus, we've got, you know, the engagement on the Facebook page. Additionally, we have um, the workbook and materials and the videos. So it's like unlimited access. So for me, that's essential and I'm very, very grateful. Oh, thank you so much, Denise. <laughs> that was totally unnecessary, but we appreciate every time we hear something positive, of course. You have, um, you've been great because you actually had something ready to go by the end of course, the way it was designed. And you, you went out there and you just went for it and you spent all that hard work and time um, on all the boring stuff that, nope, that, that stumps a lot of people. You, you just said, I got to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, yes, any yeah. words of advice you want to give people who are considering this um, in terms of like what they need to expect along the way and, and maybe words of encouragement? I would just say fight the fear, you know, just fight it. And, you know, trip school is going to provide the resources that you need. Trip school will give the education and the guidance. So if you have that fire in you, if it's in your belly, if, if, it's, if it's in your seat, just go for it. You know, what, what is there to lose? What's there to lose? Um, <laughs> most of us already have tour guiding um, experience. So what we're doing is we're just putting that to work and we're sharpening our skills, whether it be for our own selves or, or for a future um, gig that might be down the road. That's awesome. That's great advice, Denise. Um, well, listen, um, we're there to support you and we're in, we're, we can't wait to see how your business grows and um, talk to you again in the future down the road, maybe um, especially in six months or so, maybe hopefully travel will come back and we'll see those over the road tours start to be developed for 2021 with you. 
but we wish you all the luck in the world and seeing that tours, we're going to keep an eye out for it. So thanks so much for joining us and giving us that feedback today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Thank mm -hmm. you.